Well, Christmas is almost here, and I thought in preparation for our holiday house tour today, I was going to gild a couple of gourds that I had left over from Thanksgiving and make one of them into uh, a floral arrangement. And so before our holiday house tour, I thought I would give you a tutorial about how to uh, use gilding and how to gild a gourd and use it for Christmas. You can either use them as beautiful decoration or um, you can use them for centerpieces. I have chosen three gourds that I had left over from Thanksgiving. And of these three, the biggest one I'm gonna use as a vessel to do a floral arrangement in. So I have carved that out and I've cleaned out the inside and we're gonna line that with some paper towels and some tin foil. And then we're gonna put a vessel in there for water that will hold the flowers when I'm done. So the first step for gilding is you always wanna wear a pair of gloves for this. And the supplies that you're gonna use, you can either use a spray adhesive or you can use liquid sizing. Liquid sizing is fairly hard to come by these days. So I tend to use a liquid adhesive spray I'll decant it into a plastic container like this that allows me to brush it on rather than spray it on. And then you need sheets of gilding. Today I'm gonna do copper and gold gilding. And these are very, very thin sheets of metal that you peel off and you glue onto the pumpkin. So today we're going to use gold and copper because that's a lot of the color themes that I've used for this Christmas. You can also do, uh, it also comes in a bronze and it also comes in a silver. And this large pumpkin we are going to do with the gold gilding and the two smaller ones I think we're going to end up doing with the copper gilding. So I've got my container of the spray glue and I don't want to overload the pumpkin. I just want a nice light coat of glue on the front of the gourd. And I wanna brush a piece that's about the size of a square of the gild. And once it's brushed on smooth, give it a couple of seconds just to dry a little bit and become tacky. You can even try blowing on. Once the glue has become tacky, you're gonna lift out one sheet of your copper leafing you're going to very loosely place it over the area that you rubbed with the glue. And with a very light finger, you want to tap it down. Now there will be some areas where the leafing will break and that's okay because that's going to be part of the look once it's all done. Once it's all matted down, you can move on to the next piece. Lightly brush your spray glue or your sizing on the gourd. Grab another sheet of leafing. And this is the reason that you're gonna wear gloves when doing this because you're touching glue. So you are gonna get some of the leafing on your fingers. You wanna press it down into the grooves of the gourd and just continue on. Now we've got our gourd to this point where it looks very rough and uneven and it doesn't look great, but that's how it's supposed to look. We're gonna let it dry for two or three minutes at this point. And then you're gonna take another one of your dry clean brushes and you're just very lightly gonna start brushing all of the gilding so that it's flat on the pumpkin. And some of it may brush off some of it may move around, that's okay. 
but you want to make sure you're getting a really nice smooth surface on the gourd. So the second gourd I'm going to do is this little one. And we're going to do the two smaller ones in gold that are going to go with our floral arrangement in the copper one. But same process, I'm just going to brush the glue on very thin. Let it dry for a minute or two. So this particular type of gold leafing is actually adhered to the paper. And it makes it a little bit neater when you're working with this because you're gonna put, you're gonna push the gold leafing onto the gourd with this protective paper. And then slowly peel it off. And we're just gonna keep going around and doing that. So we've got our finished copper gourd and I'm going to create a beautiful floral arrangement inside of it that's very Christmassy but untraditional and I've picked some beautiful flowers right out of the garden to do this with. So we have finished our display for Christmas of our gilded gourds. We've got our copper gourd and the two gold ones. And I've got it paired with some other things that I collect and some things that are meaningful to me for the holidays. And in just a moment, we're gonna be going live to take you through a holiday house tour of our home. Thanks. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me again this week. So we're gonna start with a house tour and our house is currently decorated for Christmas. So we're gonna show you a little bit of what we did with that. We're gonna start in the laundry room of our house. Our house was built in 1965 and it was originally built for the owners of Dew Cadillac, which was the very first uh, Cadillac dealership in the United States. Uh, so it has some historical significance to the house and when we did buy it, um, we really worked to preserve pretty much all of the original features of the home. So this was always the original laundry room. Um, it was actually built as the maid's quarter, but we no longer use it as that. And so one of the great features of our laundry room are the jealousy windows. They're original to the house and they're actually made of wood. So they shut during a hurricane to protect the windows. And we put in this great countertop that we can uh, fold laundry on. This is a really industrious space for us. Our dogs live here. We uh, made some space for their crates to go into. 
And we've got our laundry center over here with a sink and cabinetry. And so we don't do too much decorating in here because this really does get a lot of use every day. Come on into the kitchen. So this kitchen, uh, the layout of this is all original to the house. We didn't do much uh, other than we resurfaced the cabinetry and put on new countertops and some painting. And in our eating area, you can see the display that we made with uh, the gourds in the video. And look how beautiful that looks. A little untraditional, but uh, very festive and holiday-like. So coming on in, uh, again, this layout's original. We didn't do much here. Um, we actually preserved the original copper hood. And we also kept the original 1965 Thermador ovens of the home. All of the cabinetry is original. We just updated it, had them refinished, new knobs. And then off of the kitchen is our butler's pantry, which serves as a great area uh, for entertaining, for keeping our stemware, creating a bar for people. Again, we keep more of our entertaining stuff along with our this little room, which is kind of a scullery type of room. I call it my prop closet. It is where we keep all of our entertaining stuff. So we keep everything organized in here that when we do have dinner parties, it's all nice and organized and we know right where everything is. Again, this is original to the house. We did not remove any of this stuff or build any of it in. That area flows into our dining room, which is a great flow for when you are entertaining and when we have dinner parties, uh, the kitchen is off on its own and the mess can be kept aside so nobody can see it. And one of the nice features I think of the dining room that you'll notice is that we painted the ceiling the same color um, as the walls. And part of the reason for doing that is that I wanted to accentuate um, the trim color in here, but it also makes it nice and warm and inviting uh, for a dining space. I mentioned the trim color because it's actually the original paint uh, from 1965 when the house was built. All we did was clean it off. It's, an, it's a, a semi-gloss oil paint um, and nobody uses oil paint anymore, but it, it lasts for ages. And here's our display on our table of the snow globes that we did uh, last week. And I think it looks really beautiful. Again, not, tr not traditional, which goes great with, um, I love white trees. So we put the white tree in the dining room with some brown and green uh, balls and some um, palm fronds that I dried from the garden, just to give it a little bit of that woodland uh, effect that goes with the snow globes. And then we enter into uh, our foyer. So this is where people will come into our home. And you'll notice in the center of the foyer, right as you walk in the front door, um, this is a very old bird bath from an old estate in Florida. And I had the idea this year to create another woodland scene, but to make an advent wreath out of it with the four candles rather than a traditional advent wreath. So we, we have used that and we keep that lit. And again, I like to keep my decorating simple. I don't like tra traditional Christmas decorating. So you'll see I don't use a lot of Christmas balls on garlands and things like that. Just some simple greenery, some uh, beautiful gold ribbon, and some things that I cut from the garden just placed in different spots. And coming in through the foyer is our half a bath. And the reason that I want to show you this is that everything in here is original. So the, the marble countertop, the mirrors, the, the frame of the mirror, the flooring, everything is original to when the house was built. All we did was re-wallpaper it. And it's amazing with just a little bit of updating what original features of a home can look like when you preserve them. And again, you can see this beautiful vignette that we created against the staircase. And when I, when I use greenery, um, so you'll notice there is some traditional Christmas greenery around and, you know, I never spend money for that stuff. I usually will go to Lowe's or Home Depot and um, I will uh, go in the trash bin, actually. They have a, a discard bin by the trees that they do and you can take it all for free. 
And then I'll add, go around my yard and take some clippings of boxwoods or some other greenery. And, um, and I will add those into the greens uh, as I'm decorating. So you, you will see a mix of greenery around when I do that. Here's our mistletoe. This year I decided to do a mistletoe. I think we all need a little extra love this year. So this is a mixture of rosemary, some greens from the garden, and also some boxwood. This is our leisure room. Say hello to our resident canary, Paco. He's about one and a half. He has not started singing yet. And he has a nut in his beak right now, but uh, we hope he gets to be singing pretty soon. But our leisure room is our everyday room where we watch TV. Uh, we even eat dinner in here. It's very casual. You can see all the sunlight that streams through here. And a couple of the highlights of the decorating here over here is a tree in the corner. This was my dad's tree and he passed away this year. So to have him with us, we decided to put his tree up uh, from where he lived. And so he's with us through the holidays. It's just a nice remembrance of him. And on the and uh, you can just see some of the small decorations that we did. And over here, these are actually um, the vessels of the paper whites that we did a couple of weeks ago. And you can see they're just starting to sprout up. So they look really beautiful used for Christmas, but these are actually gonna sprout in January. Um, when all the decorations come down, we're gonna have paper whites all over the house, which will be nice for the new year. And then this is sort of the grand display in here. I love silver tinsel trees and uh, usually they're in different rooms at the house every year, but I decided to do one huge display to sort of accentuate our traditional Christmas, uh, family Christmas tree. This is filled with all of our ornaments, uh, Tony's and mine and my mother's from years and years of collecting ornaments. So this is our very traditional family tree. And when I grew up as a kid, we always used tinsel on our trees. I'm not sure how many of you remember tinsel, but my mother insists every year that she has to put some tinsel on the tree. So we give her a couple of strands and she gets to put three or four strands on the tree. Uh, and then coming on into here, this is our great living room. It's a really huge room. It's fantastic for entertaining. Um, we designed this room with the idea to entertain. So it's a, we don't have a traditional furniture placement in here. We've created several sitting areas where people can gather for different conversations, but it really keeps the flow of a party going when we are entertaining. And again, decorating in here to keep on sort of the silver uh, tinsel tree uh, idea. We've got um, uh, we've got reindeer that are silver. We've got the garlands and some of the flocked Christmas trees with silver balls that just sort of repeat that flavor of a silvery Christmas. But again, you'll notice it's not traditional red and green Christmas decoration. And unfortunately this year we can't have our holiday party. Normally we host about 75 people here at our house um, and we're not able to do that. So this is our way of opening up our doors and uh, letting some of our friends in to see what we've done for the holidays. And so that concludes uh, the tour of our first floor and thanks for joining me. I'm gonna hop over to my computer. My cameraman's gonna shut down this one and I'm gonna answer any questions that you guys might have and uh, I will see you in two seconds. Huh, yeah. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, please feel free to send them to me. I've got one so far. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a very cute question. How many ornaments do you have? Um, too many to count. We usually have bins and bin, plastic bins of ornaments. And uh, the sad thing is that I keep getting more every year. So I love very old um, German type glass ornaments. So I try to find them as cheaply as possible in thrift stores and stuff. And when I do, I really uh, 
Tony will always make fun of me because I'm coming home with boxes of ornaments, but we have a lot. Uh, let's see, I love your palm fronds in the Christmas tree, very Florida. Thank you very much. It actually was a last minute thing. We had a palm tree that suffered um, during the last storm, that tropical storm that we had come through and I had to cut them off and I thought, what if I dry these and put them in a tree? So it did come out really good. Um, so thank you for noticing and I appreciate the compliment. How many trees do you have? Um, I think we have a little over a dozen, I think 15 trees in total. And uh, my dad's tree is the newest addition this year and maybe next year we might add another one. <laughs> Anything special you do to decorate outside? Um, I don't do a lot outside. We do do some lights for Christmas and our lights down here in Florida um, on the outside of the house are uh, frosted white, clear and yellow, a very soft yellow color. So it's a really uh, pretty effect. It's difficult to have a very Christmassy feel in Florida um, without going you know, crazy cabana style. So I like to keep it minimal outside. We've just got some wreaths hanging on our windows and then uh, some lights that come on at night. Do you use wired ribbon? Um, I do, I use wired ribbon and I mostly use um, either a satin or a grow grain ribbon. And it really depends what I'm using the ribbon for. Um, if I can show you here, you can see on this display here, this is all wired ribbon because I need it to stay stiff around that frame that I put it on, but like the ribbon on the staircase is just a loose uh, unwired satin ribbon. And I use that because I love the way it drapes and hangs. Um, so I do use both. I love to decorate every room too. Tell me how you edit so as not to overdo. Um, that's a great question, uh, mainly because my biggest thing about decorating, about interior design, about almost anything entertaining is really about editing and knowing how to do that. Um, I start slow and I slowly add things as I'm going. And I sort of just get to a point where I feel like it looks like enough. And when I get to that point, I stop and I revisit it the next day. And if I still feel like it looks like enough, I'll leave it at that. But sometimes I'll walk into a room and think it might need some greenery or something needs a little extra special touch to it. Um, it really depends, but editing is really important. And uh, it's all about personal style. I will say the biggest thing for me that I feel that our decorating doesn't look like a lot because I do do a lot of decorating is that the color schemes all match each other and it's all very soothing to the eyes. So, you know, in the living room, it's a lot of silvers and greens. In the dining room, it was all about the white and the forestry look. Um, so I try to keep themes throughout the rooms to keep it cohesive. Your home looks beautiful. Thank you very much. That's a sweet compliment. Where are you able to store all of these things? Well, we, we're lucky, well, actually in Florida, we don't have basements here, but we are lucky that uh, we have a large full attic in our house. So everything goes up in the attic and comes back down the next year. So it can be a bit of a chore doing that, but we manage okay. How do you decide on a theme or concept for your decorations? Um, it, I don't know, to be honest with you, I just come up with these ideas sometimes and I think, oh, this would look good. And then I try it out. And, um, you know, sometimes as I'm going into doing a room, I may have to run out and go buy something uh, just to make sure that I get that look completed that I want it to do. Um, but I really think about color first. So um, like, I, like I said, normally we scatter the silver Christmas trees all throughout the house and each one has different color balls on it. Um, this year I grouped them all together. So I really think about color. I think about placement and I think about what I want a room to feel like. I don't do too much in the living room normally because when we entertain um, it's filled with food in here. So you don't wanna have too much during the holidays. You wanna think about how you're gonna be using your rooms and who's gonna be in them and how they're gonna be applicable to navigating through the holiday season. How do you decorate on a theme or concept for your decorate? Oh, I answered that. <laughs> Sorry, thanks. Um, 
Do you know Bonnie McKay's book of tree book, Tree of Treasures? I have never heard of it, but I am going to look that up now. Thank you for the suggestion. I'm sure it's a wonderful book. Um, do you store the trees decorated for the following year? Oh no, we, we undecorate everything every year and it gets to be a mess. You, I'm not sure if you noticed, but um, the same type of snow that we used in the snow globes, that really loose uh, flocking type of snow is on almost everything in the house. So when we start pulling it apart, uh, it, it, it takes a couple days, it becomes a mess, but we undecorate everything. We organize everything by color in different bins, label it and put it all away for the next year. How long will the gilded gourds last? Uh, they last for a very long time. So if you don't bruise or puncture a gourd, um, it will last, I've had them last for six, seven months uh, gilded. So they, they won't really rot that easily unless you uh, bruise it, puncture it, get a hole in it, um, or if it's by a lot of heat. So they'll last for a long time. I, last year I gilded all of them for actually October um, used them through Thanksgiving and then again through Christmas. So I got three seat, three uh, holidays out of one set of gilded gourds. Do your dogs ever get into the decorations and what kind of dogs? Um, they do not, they're pretty passive dogs. We only have two now, we used to have four, three Vishlas and a golden. Um, now we have one Vishla and one golden and our Vishla is blind, so she doesn't see much. So she is limited access to roam throughout the house. Um, but when there was four of them, yes, it could get a little rambunctious, um, but they've never gotten in to destroy anything, luckily. And let's see, the last question I have is, do the frames play a part in your year round design? They do. So one of the things I did not mention is that I am not one that takes down my normal decorating, uh, puts it away, brings out Christmas, puts that away, bring, I decorate around all the normal stuff that are in my house every year. So you see those frames hanging on my bookcase. Uh, they're there year round. And that's not to say that I might not take them down, change it up, do something different, but everything that you see that I've decorated around are my everyday decorations that will still be there after Christmas. So that's a great question. Um, I don't have any more questions, so I want to thank you guys for joining, and uh, I appreciated you uh, coming into my home and seeing how I've decorated it, and I'm a little bit uh, a little bit sad this year that we can't open up our house and do our annual holiday party because it really is a fun night, um, but we will get through it, and we will host it again next year, and uh, I want to wish everybody a happy start to your holiday. Have a lot of fun decorating your houses this year. Again, I say it every week, but this year more than ever, uh, with everybody being stuck inside, it's, you know, do it up. This is the year to do it up and appreciate everything um, because life might be a lot busier once COVID ends. So thank you again for joining me. Um, videos will be on YouTube at Home with Joseph. If you want to see them again or recommend them to anybody. And if you have not done so, please follow me on Instagram at Home with Joseph. Thanks so much and we'll see you next week.